Hi, my name is Jeremiah Vogelman. Guided by a passion for wild mushrooms and an interest in how they travel from forest to table, I set out to explore the culture of mushroom foraging in Vermont, and I met a diverse cast of characters. Here are their stories. My name is Ari Rockland Miller, and I co-run a blog uh, called The Mushroom Forager. I consider myself a forager, uh, you know, and I don't get too hung up on some of the politics of that. Eating everything that you can forage for. Yeah. Uh, not just mushrooms, but right. wild, wild produce, yeah. you know. I've been fascinated by mushrooms ever since I was a little kid. Um, I still remember one day when I was maybe 10 years old, going out and just, I always spent a lot of time in the woods. My family grew up in a rural spot, and. I remember uh, just scouring the woods for mushrooms during the summer on one wet day and coming back and piling maybe a hundred different types of mushrooms in the hood of my parents' car. And I was really curious about what they were, but of course I wasn't able to ID any of them. 25 years ago, so you know, I've been in four chains ever since then. You know, my focus is almost exclusively mushrooms. In that it's not about people I've met, but about what I notice when I go into the woods is that there's just more competition here, and you, you notice the presence of other foragers. Oh yes, they have lots of black trumpet patchy. Um, but they like rocky area moss. Um, a lot of times they will grow around trees, um, but it's gotta be a certain, a certain condition. I mean, mushrooms are the fruit of an organism. They're more analogous to an apple on a tree than they are to the tree itself. So you're not uprooting the apple tree, you're merely picking the apple. Interesting part of the business because I've been sort of now known as the mushroom guy, right? but I also am an apple guy. Right? I was taught by my grandmother. Um, she started us, she starts all of the, all of her grandchildren out at three when they can understand how to identify a mushroom or how to ask questions about mushrooms. Hunter gather heritage and learning how to look at the, at the forest in a new way and learning about forest ecology and the real joy for me is teaching that to others and sharing that with others so even if they're competing with me I still think it's a net, net game. Again these are not one of the safest ones. There's some mushrooms that I'll say once you've seen them with me I'll set you free to find them on your own. I totally trust you. There's no, no risk. These are not one of those, let me be clear. He commented in our blog a few times, and he, he called himself not a friendly forager. That was his name um, on the blog. And he was pissed off that we were teaching people how to forage, because he wanted all the mushrooms for himself. And there's no question he was someone who was doing it on an economic level, it may have been his career, I don't really know. But he was just really angry. And he was saying, Vermont is already saturated with foragers. There's no more spots even left for anyone. Like, why would you teach anyone how to do this? Uh, there's not more competition. There was more competition in the beginning. Right. Um, but my product is better. So right. they actually, the people who were my competition, call me. It's hard for me to assist competition here in Addison County because I just don't know that there are that many foragers. I've met a few along the way. I found myself being increasingly fascinated by the wild mushrooms because they were just more mysterious and uh, seemed more rewarding and more exciting. And part of the commercial mushroom industry, the mushroom cultivation industry, to scare people about wild mushrooms. Because the people who make millions uh, growing button mushrooms don't want people who have the knowledge to find, find even better mushrooms on their own for free. If somebody gets a mushroom that is not what they thought it was or they got sick from it, that your insurance will cover it. I have a liability insurance that if I pick the wrong kind of mushroom and sell it to you and you serve it, someone gets sick or dies, right. that my insurance covers it and that way my customer is not liable for buying the wrong kind of product. Sure. I was still about 10 years old and <laughs> didn't get too far with that either yeah. and I still have it to this day. Um, it's Gary Linkoff's Audubon Guide. My three-year-old knows what morels are, knows what black trumpets are, hen of the woods. Yeah. 
picking of the woods. He pretty much knows them all, except for uh, the oysters he's not sure of. Right. Um, but you make sure that he only picks the right ones, right? No, I make sure that he doesn't touch any. Oh, really? Until he's old enough to make sure he knows what he's picking. Okay. He can tell me what they are, point to them, everything, but he's not allowed to touch them. How old is he? He's three. Okay. He'll be four on Halloween. <laughs> Um, and he's fascinated by mushrooms? Oh, he loves them. There's something about the mushrooms that is just different to me, probably because they're so mysterious and they pop up, you know, their own whim, whereas plants are sort of always just there. The eating the gourmet mushrooms is, is my focus, um, partly because I love, to eat, I love to eat good food and there's so many incredible flavors out there. Um, also interested in the medicinal mushrooms, I think there's something really empowering about being able to find our own medicine. That's, locally uh, grows in the wild and our forest right here. Um, you got to know that that person's got experience. Right. And you should know what you're picking or buying. Sure. You so, should. Yeah. And if you don't know what you're buying, they should be able to tell you what you're buying and how to cook it and where to look it up to make sure that that's exactly what you're getting. Do you think that foragers in the state should have to be certified? Yes. Oh. A program like that of Maine being made universal for all states because I think that it also helps the foragers who really have put in the time and effort to get to that expert level so they can distinguish themselves from the people who give foragers a bad name by perhaps mis 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 mushrooms. It was like Little Gary and his work with the Moon Culinary Institute, so I you know. Right. Uh, and it's very easy for me to just walk into the back of the sure. restaurant and say, you know what's going on. Hi, Chef. Yeah. Grandchildren, great grandchildren, to know the ways of her ancestors. And that was foraging and hunting and living off the land. Right. I'm just teaching my kids for if ever the world does go to hell, <laughs> we can hunt and forage and live and not worry about it. A little it. scary maybe in terms of people wiping out the patches that exist. Right. Although I, I still think that the earth has more to gain than to lose by humans uh, getting more in touch with our hunter-gatherer roots and learning how to forage. No question that we need some more uh, clarity and transparency and understanding of, of these rules and regulations. The most delicious foods and the most potent medicines are growing in your backyard. Find them at the market or find them in the woods, but get yourself an education. Buy a book, talk to a local expert, know where your food comes from, and know your mushrooms. Support your local forager. Yes, I love mushrooms. Yeah, of the wild variety. Yeah, I mean, I just love mushrooms of all varieties, really. But wild is always good. Yeah, they tend to be tastier. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Those factory farmed mushrooms don't really have much taste. I know. So, how do you feel about wild mushrooms? I dig them, man. Yeah, they're so rad. Why is that? <laughs> you know what so I mean? you go crazy? Yeah. So you're you're in for like the you know the shamanistic, you know, mystical experience. What does that mean? Yeah. You know? I'm just trying to get loaded, man. Yeah. How do you yeah. feel after you have a psychedelic experience? You feel I've never had a psychedelic experience. You feel uh, this is all confidential, don't worry. Yeah, your, right. your name is not really known. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't even know what that word means. How do you spell psychedelic? Yeah. <laughs> I think it starts with a H. Yeah, you're. Yeah. I think you're on something. <laughs> How do you spell. feel right now? I feel great. I feel hungry. Hungry for? What are you looking for love? In all the wrong places. <laughs> <laughs>